We face the, the greatest build-up of military capability in our region since 1945, and that includes significant investment by other nations in missiles. The ability of China to carry out its declared intentions over Taiwan and places like that is getting closer. At the moment, Australia does not have a sufficiently robust deterrent capability. Neither, for that matter, does the United States. Australia wants to make its own long-range missiles as part of a strategy of deterrence. What we're really interested in is casting doubt in any potential adversary's mind by increasing the strike for the Australian Defence Force, which means people think twice before taking action. This is all about promoting peace in our region. Military strategists call it area denial, the simple threat that an Australian plane, ship or land-based vehicle could launch a long-range missile at a warship or other target hundreds of kilometres away, in an area off Taiwan, the South China Sea or critical trade routes around Indonesia. There are people out there who want to make this all about the South China Sea. The bottom line is that when we faced an existential crisis in the past, it was in the archipelago immediately to Australia's north. Former Army Intelligence Officer John Blacksland says the war in Ukraine has been a wake-up call to many nations around the world that it's one thing to have warships, fighter jets and armour, it's entirely another thing to keep them supplied with ordnance to continue fighting. The war in Ukraine has demonstrated that uh, the United States is not actually as well placed as we had once thought it might be to be the arsenal of democracy it we used to be. He says it's no longer enough to just stockpile missiles. The government doesn't like to advertise how small our supply of war stocks of missiles and munitions actually is. For low intensity to medium intensity conflict, we could sustain operational tempo for a few weeks. Uh, for high intensity operations, we're talking about perhaps a few days. And that's really a little bit unnerving. Well, I'm, I'm obviously not going to reveal the, the level of stock of critical weapons on national television. I think one factor that people need to recognise is that we've lost a 10-year warning horizon for a major conflict in our region, and that means that we do need to increase our stock. The government declared US missile-making companies Raytheon and Lockheed Martin as strategic partners. But there's a mountain of red tape, and neither company is allowed to set up a factory in Australia without getting permission from the US Congress, Pentagon and State Department to share high-tech defence secrets. For AUKUS to succeed, we need to facilitate the flow of defence technologies and know-how between our three nations, while safeguarding against hostile actors who would damage this collaboration. The US House Foreign Affairs Committee held a hearing on this issue weeks ago, with senior Democrats raising concerns about Australia's ability to protect US military tech from Chinese spies. Australia's intelligence services emphasized this threat in its own 2023 threat assessment. I want to make sure that the Australian and the UK regulatory structures that are controlling sensitive defense technologies that are comparable to what we have in the United States, are they the same? Do they differ? Is it safe? To make sure it does not get in the hands of, 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 of the Chinese. Australia has been here before trying to get around this US red tape. In 2007, it signed a defence trade treaty. Ten years later, Australia signed a new deal to become part of the US national technology and industrial base. And despite promises from the Biden administration after AUKUS was signed, the problem of US red tape is yet to be resolved. The government also has another option, Norwegian. Kongsberg uh, makes two precision strike weapons, uh, the naval strike missile, uh, known as the NSM and the Joint Strike Missile, known as the JSM. Norwegian defence company Kongsberg already makes two missiles that the US and Australia use. It also says the problem of the US red tape wouldn't impact its decision to establish a missile production facility in Australia. So we do believe we could probably move quite quickly. We can't build everything in Australia and I think everyone understands that. We think that you know, we can generate a volume of weapons uh, and a bunch of strike options that, uh, you know, that would make a local production capability, you know, both viable and sustainable. 
It's also not clear whether any factory would be simple assembly or genuine homegrown manufacturing with most or all Australian inputs. What can we do in country to make sure that you know, we, we are prepared to, you know, to build more if we need to build more? The other important thing is actually also around the maintenance and recertification. We don't need to send missiles back offshore for maintenance. The government will make a decision on which companies will set up factories before the middle of next year. I don't think we're moving fast enough. I think we need to have a, a sense of urgency, the likes of which we have not seen for generations. Um, we have, unfortunately, in both the United States and in Australia, bureaucracies that the wheels spin incredibly slowly. We've allocated real expenditure, we've started early plans. The Albanese Labor government is getting on with increasing the strikeability of the Australian Defence Force.